Shalom, everyone. Welcome back. In this week's Torah portion, we find the story of the Benos Tzalafchad, the daughters of Tzalafchad. Tzalafchad was a man who uh, lived during the time of Moses in the desert, and he died a very tragic death. And after he passed away, he left no male heirs, no male heirs. So his three daughters, his daughters came to Moshe, and they said, you know, our, da- our father left no male heirs, and everyone is supposed to have a portion in the land of Israel, uh, but it goes by the son. But what happens if the man leaves no male heirs? So who gets the land? So we feel we should get the land because we are his heirs. We're the ones he left behind. This is one of the few cases where Moshe did not actually know the answer to that question. So he went to God. He went to the Ohamoe, the tabernacle, and he asked God that question. And God answered him by saying that the daughters of Tzalafchad would inherit the land since he had no male heirs. And he went and he told them that. And of course, they were very happy to hear that. And here we see an incredible case of where women, Jewish women, knew more than even Moshe Rabbeinu himself, even more than Moses himself. And they knew intuitively that they would be able to get the land of Israel that was promised to them. We learned several messages, several important lessons from this story. First of all, how precious the land of Israel is to Jewish women and how important it was to them that they wanted to make sure that they had a portion of it. We also see how sometimes women very often know more than the men and how women are more spiritual than men in so many respects, that they knew more even than Moshe Rabbeinu himself. And God confirmed that. It's really an incredible thing. When people complain very often that women are second-class citizens in Judaism, that is not at all the case. In fact, in Judaism, women are of a higher spiritual level than men. Women are holier than men. And we see this in several ways. First of all, a man when he's born, needs a bris mila. He needs to be circumcised in order for him to be complete. A woman has no such ritual. A woman is is created complete to begin with. Uh, a man says every morning in davening in his prayer, Shalom, Asani Isha. Thank you, God, for not making me a woman because a woman goes through childbirth and pain and menstruation and everything like that. And also women have fewer Uh, mitzvahs than men to observe. But why is that? Because women do not need to do so many mitzvahs, especially the ones that are time-determined and positive in nature that men do. And why is that? Because women have a higher purpose in life, and that is to take care of the family, to make sure that the families and the children are taken care of. And that is even more important than davening in a minion, more important than putting on tefillin, more important than any of these things. So women have a very, very high and a lofty purpose in the world. And therefore, a woman says in the morning, Shasani Kirtso, know that you thank you, God, for making me according to your will, that you wanted me to be the way I am, p- complete, pure, and holy, and that's how you made me. A man cannot say that, Bracha, because it's not true. A man needs a circumcision while a woman does not. So a woman is of a higher spiritual level. In Kabbalah, in Jewish mysticism, it talks about how the woman's soul is at a higher spiritual level than a man's soul even. And we are told that when when um, Abraham asked God about sending out Hagar and her son Yishmael away from the camp, as Sarah had instructed him to do, and he didn't know what to do, he went to God, and God said to him, listen to your wife Sarah. Our sages learned from this that Sarah was on a higher spiritual level than Abraham was. She was a greater prophetess than even Abraham was. So this is a very important lesson for women to understand that they are on a higher spiritual level. And women need, importantly, to direct their families and lead their families into the right path, a path of holiness, a path of mitzvahs, a path of goodness, to make sure that the home is strictly kosher to make sure that Shabbos is observed in the home and the holidays are observed, to make sure that the children are raised 
in the proper Jewish way that the children should be sent to Jewish schools and that the husband should go off to Minyan every day, twice a day, every morning and every evening, and to make sure that the sanctity of the home is kept. And this is really the domain, not so much of the man, but of the woman. And therefore, who is in charge of Jewish life? It is not the man, it is the woman. The woman is called the Akera Tabayit, the foundation of the home. And therefore, it is her job to make sure that Judaism is kept and observed strictly in the home. And we know that they certainly will. And therefore, it will be the woman who will be the ones who will be directing all of us to the right path when Mashiach comes. May it happen speedily in our days. This coming Friday, a week from today, is uh, the is Rosh Chodesh of the, the beginning of the nine days before Tisha B'Av in which we start preparing ourselves for the fast of Tisha B'Av by not eating any meat or bathing uh, or things like that, not listening to music during this time. So we want to wish you all an easy fast and an easy nine days. And uh, the imperative of the Lubavitcher Rebbe was always to start learning the laws of the temple, Hilchas uh, Pesach Bechira, as the Rambam calls it. And every day we should learn some of these laws in preparation for when the temple will be rebuilt. Candlelighting in San Diego is at 7.35. We'll be davening Menachemar that night, that time, and throughout the week as well. Have a good Shabbos.